Super Booth 23. I'm here on the booth of Yuhi with Urs. That's me. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> so day three, but still good. All good. Um, you showed at NAM show the Filterscape. See, si, yeah, yeah, we did. But you have one more new uh, thing on Superwoof. So you're working on multiple projects. Well, yes, of course. I mean, there are projects that are like, you know, a maintenance of existing stuff. And then there sometimes are also projects that are like big updates, big news and big things that take, you know, sometimes 10 years to work on and then sometimes they come close to a finish. And then once they're close to a finish, we can show them. And uh, you are still or, uh, on Zebra 3 That's and you are showing here a little, little teaser. It's a, it's a glimpse of it, it's a glimpse of it. So Zebra 2 had a companion plugin called Zebra LED, which is like a, it's a little version of Zebra 2 and it's only an oscillator and MSEG and a little bit of stuff around it and to show that the oscillator of Zebra is already very capable. And um, what we show now is like um, a preview, almost an alpha version of Zebra LED 3. So the free single oscillator, single MSEG version of Zebra 3. And um, we will be able to hopefully be able to release that ahead of Zebra 3 to, you know, give the community what we are working on and um, also to, to um, so they are already familiar with the tools that are then used in Zebra 3 as well. Uh, and uh, it's basically, it, it's the same engine as in, uh, then in Zebra 3 later, or yeah, it is, same. Like strip it down and call it, you know, it's... No, no, it's, no, it's going it's, it's to be same. pretty much the same. So it's possible that we add more stuff later, but it's already so complex that uh, it is just the oscillator is, is a complete synthesizer if you want. It's like, it's a wavetable synthesizer, it's a morphing spline wave synthesizer and it's also, as I will show, an additive synthesizer with a completely different approach than anything that we know, basically. Is it, um, I'd say, uh, how far is the development so far in the Zebra? Is it, I think, uh, already something that runs or is it? Yes, there's something that runs, it just doesn't look like anything at all. Mm -hmm. But um, we have, so I think about, yeah, but we have, we have, we have on and off worked on like uh, uh, 10 to 15 of the modules and there will be like 20 to, I don't know, 25, 30, depends on what you, what you distinguish as a module. But, the, but the step from Zebra 3 to, uh, to 2 to 3 will be massive, probably, it will be a different look and... Yeah, yeah, different look and, but mostly, the, the main incentive was to, to harmonize the different, the different editors, right? So Zebra 2 has an editor for Wavetail, it has an editor for, for uh, an MSEG, it has an editor for LFOs and all of that. And they're all different. And in Zebra 3, they're all going to be consistent and work the same way. And this is actually what we're showing here. But it remains, it will remain via free. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll have the same, the same basic concept, but everything is going to be newly written. There's no repetition from back then. Everything is going to be new. Yeah. So uh, maybe we check out Zebralet. Yeah, let's do that. So here it is. It looks almost a little bit like Zebralet, and we made this this front page just so that it's reminiscent to Zebralet as it was. And you have here the wavetable editor, right, so, and, and of course, it right now doesn't do anything for whatever reason, but, um, so you can create your oscillator waveform like, like you always could, right, you know, like, like this and stuff, and that is, this is not the same as the, as the MSEG editor, so they work the same, they, they do the same things, you can do, you can do the same, kind of editing process and all of that. So we are, we are harmonizing it through the different, the different editors, basically. And um, like in Zebra, there is not just the, the small version of it, there's a bigger version. The bigger version, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, actually, it's actually, for one thing, it's the most simple way to edit a wavetable that I know. 
and at the same time the most complex one. So the most simple one is like this, and you can drag shapes like this. So it's reminiscent to, there are many synthesizers now that have like this grid-based approach to draw things, but um, we think we think we managed to to change it in a way that's uh, even even faster and more intuitive. So it you know it depends on which direction you drag something and the shapes that you have. They they can be flipped and they can be upside down and backwards and all of that. And with fewer shapes, you get like a lot of different different things, right? Like this and this and this. But Zebralet is maybe you want to show what uh, the Zebra 3 engine is capable of. So it's more yes. it's more for the people who, who get familiar with the. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we do. It's a it's a freeware, but it's not. We're not altruistic completely. I mean, we love to give people free stuff, but it's also <laughs> advertisement for our actual big versions, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of wind, but yeah, I hope you can still hear me. And um, so this 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 first editor here, you can you can do a lot of stuff like you know like this very simply. You can do straight lines. You can and you can also take things and move them like this. And it, it's very quick, very easy to use. And um, and the same editor. The same thing also works for envelopes, so you can you can use the same kind of shapes to create your rhythmic envelopes, your MSEGs, your even sequences and stuff. Right? You can do that easily. And if you need an ADSR, you just drag this shape there, and then you you start editing with the you know with the macro buttons and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is very simple. And at the same time, we have a we have a second mode, which looks like that, and that is like like your your super professional spline based uh, any anything any shape goes tool you know like and somebody set constraints to to just X right so yes no no it works properly so you and you have like professional tools here that you normally expect in a in a, in a CID application like um, you know, you can, you can, and it's all curve-based and spline-based, and you don't have to have all the spline things visible. You just, you can just do. So you can really geek out in this. You can absolutely geek out, and you can do, you can do a lot of interesting things like. Um, but do you think uh, with this approach, it's more uh, direct to using a uh, wavetable? I think many people doesn't use this wavetable editors in, in many soft sense. Yeah, I think the the, the problem with wavetable editors in soft sense is this: that that when you when you start painting a waveform and you want to you want to have a smooth transition to another waveform, that's not so easily done, right? So like. If, for instance, if you did you know, like PWM, where where you have this shape and it goes like this and this, this is a lot of drawing. If you wanted to do that by hand, as an example, but because this is spline based, we can actually morph between two waveforms, right? And it, I can show this. There's a there's a third editor, and the third editor automatically does all this morphing action. And I hope. And you, you can you can create like 16 um, waveforms here that that can look all very different. Like we can have a oh yeah, like a, a sine wave in between. We can have like uh, a square wave. Let's do a square wave like this, right? And um, and then each can each can morph in different ways. Mm -hmm. and And then, uh, uh, when I take the preview off here, you can you can uh, 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 you can morph through all of these all of these uh, uh, waveforms. And what you can do then is the usual stuff. So you can set the number of unison voices. Here's, let's say four. Right. 
right? And and you can you can still more through it. And it's gonna be the the underlying engine is is, is pretty much almost the same as in Hive Two. So it's gonna be in Hive Two is is I think Hive Two is is pretty, you know. It, it's renowned for that it has a good quality of the wavetable playback, mm -hmm. and this will be in here as well. But uh, it doesn't stop there. So here we we also let's let's get a something like that. Uh, here we can we also have oscillator effects, and some are the same as in in Zebra, and some are completely new ones. And one that's really that that people like from other synthesizers that we reimagined here is, for instance, the Reface, right? So with Reface, we can we can go in here and make a new curve, an additional curve like this, and this can be the the phase of the of the of the reface right but we can have more than one of these curves you can have a second one and uh, we can do crazy stuff here and then when we when we reface the whole curve we can we can also cross fade to the to the other curves whoa it's windy so we can have multiple multiple curves that reface and these curves can also morph and so it's like it's like very meta and and um it's very geeky i i will admit that but it's very capable so this is a whole synth in itself and um and you can combine different uh, uh different um oscillator effects and Some that do really beautiful things and some things, you know, and and we have we have better CPUs today than back in the days when I did Zebra 2. So I can do a little bit more here now, and we can do really really good and yeah, bright and big things. But it will be it will be not in the CPU like a Diva or so. No, 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 no. It's more like I think um, it will be CPU wise a little bit more than Hive, but less than Diva. Right, less than Diva, but um, we also have something else. Instead of just the wavetable-like playback with the oscillator unison and stuff, this is something that I'm showing a lot lately on, on this on this booth. Is we have a we have an additive engine, which has up to 1,000 uh, uh, oscillators, and this. And this uh, uh, this thing can uh, can you can detune the harmonics. Mm -hmm. You can freely detune them, and it uses the same special curves that we draw here. Right. So. Um, this is still just one oscillator, right? But you can do multiple in absolutely zebra, crazy later. stuff, and it's got you know it's got also just traditional. It's got filters with resonance in the spectral effects, and um, is yeah. There, but, is there any? Um, we know it from wavetable since they always have a uh, thousand twenty-four tables, or is it? Is there any limit here, or well, how does it manage all this? No, the the so the the the. the the, a single cycle has yeah. uh, uh, internally has 2048 samples but we can do more if that's necessary but because the 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 waveforms themselves they're I mean as I said they are spline based so they have unlimited uh, uh, nearly unlimited um, um, resolution and um, all these all these movements between them are absolutely continuous right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so this that's and so from that perspective, it's nearly unlimited in resolution. Mm -hmm. But then you can also use this to export wavetables for other synthesizers, like Hive, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they have there will be probably a limit of 256 because that's the most common one, right? So I think uh, yeah, pretty much all the others do like 256. 
and um, and you can do other crazy things with it. You can you can copy the waveforms as SVG and paste them into Illustrator or into graphic software, and you can even go back, but that's pretty random. And you can also use uh, you can use uh, samples. I can show you this here now. You can use you can drag a wave file on it, and the wave file gets transformed, vectorized into into a shape like this, into a wave shape like this, which you can then morph. Okay. Right. So um, that's quite a lot, and it, many companies would sell this as individual plugin already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just this is just this is just a glimpse of it. It's actually way, way, way deeper. There's still so many more functions that I cannot show now in a in an instant, but. Um, the, the important thing for us is, is to, to let the users experience directly that it's, for one thing, super simple. It is also exact, almost exactly like, like it's always been, but it's also super deep and it also has functions and it has a completely new, in my, from what I know, a completely new approach to additive synthesis with these drawable spectra and, and um, the independent combination of uh, your individual spectrum, the independent manipulation of the volume of the harmonics as and the pitch of the harmonics through the use of spline waveforms. Okay. Um, and when we can expect Sabalet this year? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'm, but I'm always optimistic. You have to take everything I say with a grain of salt. But um, it's so far already. There's a couple of glitches. Sometimes it crashes, right? As so Alpha software does that. And it remains free, yeah? It will remain free, yeah, of course. And yeah. uh, so we expect this year Sebralet and Filterscape. Yeah, Filterscape is coming very soon, I think. They're currently making presets and stuff for mm -hmm. that. Uh, Zebralet will, I, I mean, let's say, I don't know if we will have many presets and stuff initially, so then we will probably do a beta version. The beta version will probably go for like, because it's so complex, probably like two months or something. Okay. I don't know. And then we'll have a nice package with presets and everything. Okay. And one last question, and because we had always uh, every super with the same question, um, Apple now introduced Logic for iPad. Oh yeah, and they what, did. What do you think about this? Because you always said uh, we are not on iOS and we don't want iPad. And yeah, I mean. Is it something now for you more serious or? Oh, you know, we would of course totally love to do that. Mm. You know, because many people ask us for it. But we have so much work still with this, and we would rather, we would much rather spend the work on creating something new than adopting another platform, right? So, in so you would add a, a more like an an own synthesizer for than for iPad than yeah, and it would have, and it probably would have to have a completely different interface because uh, touch base you 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 work differently than mm -hmm. than with the mouse. I personally prefer to work with the mouse. Other people want other things, mm -hmm. and the other thing is, we're currently because we we we're, we're shifting our technologies as well. So we we. We went from um, from different. We, we have a new build system. We have new things there. We are switching. We're switching to Clap as our internal format, which is something that we, you know, that we also introduced two years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be so much easier if Apple also supported mm -hmm. Clap. But you know, there's um, and how, who knows. Where, where is now with the development of Clap? Is it uh, it's, some it's news? It's ongoing. There's, there's, it's a, there's, a, there's a lot of news. We had like this workshop yesterday. I personally wasn't there, but there were 60 people there from also from really big companies, and I do not know if they would be comfortable with me saying anything about it. But um, I know that in in very few weeks, one of the most popular plugins of all plugins currently is coming out as a clap version. Okay. And um, it's the audio thing and many other developers are doing claps already. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people doing it already. Mostly people, uh, there's many people who do clap who use the Juice framework because we ma we made or somebody one of our guys or two guys made a drop in for it and and anybody who uses Juice can also already make clap. But we also, I think we are someone. Someone from Bitwig, I think, is in talks with uh, 
the Jewish team to see if they can take that over and if they want to develop a little bit further because it would give them more options to do more things than just the common, most common denominator, right? So it's happening. It's something that is actually happening. And we're well, and you here is still super busy as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are just really busy. See, the funny thing is, this is like, like it's a little bit embarrassing that we only have one club plugin so far, this MFM2. And Filterscape will be the next one, and and we slowly have to. This year we have to update everything with Clap as well, and get Zebralet out, and work on more Zebra things, and uh, there's also work on Ubik going on. So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, and our team is, you know, we we are now 18 or 19, and I think one third is developers, and they have their different tasks and stuff. They do their different things, but. Everybody works a little bit here, a little bit there, and makes everything better. I read, I read a lot about Ubik, so Ubik is not coming this year in you. Uh, I do not know. I would okay. have to ask a developer what the what the plan is. Okay. But uh, it's, I, you know, I, I hire developers specific to do these things. So, okay. Right, and um, yeah. So I hope I hope that this year is also the year where at least it should go from an alpha maybe to a beta. We hope, we hope. But I cannot promise that. Okay. Thank you, Urs. Cool. And I wish you a good Super Wolf 23 yeah, the you. last hours. So thank yeah, you. You too. Yeah, I will, I will now go and uh, I'm going to have a sit down there with my guys. So, and thank you. Thank Bye. you.